the lessons, the messages, the insights, and even the wisdom from doing this fun vlog where I try to find my love again. That is my path of minimalism. Let me share with you everything whilst I do my laundry. So if you haven't watched this vlog, I highly recommend that you do because I share with you how I needed to find my way again with minimalism. If you haven't followed my channel for a while, you may not know that Miller was actually how I helped heal from my mental health challenge. You see, when I found out about Millerism, it was probably at the deepest, darkest stage of my life. But I came across Millerism and whilst I decluttered and slimmed down my life from excess stuff, the layers came back and it gave me clarity, purpose and the insights that I needed in order to be able to help myself heal from the depression and anxiety that I was experiencing at the time over nine years ago. So in doing this challenge, this mini challenge for myself, I actually learned a lot. I'm going to share with you exactly what I learned right now as I fold my laundry and essentially tidy declutter with you. All right, so the first thing I realized is that by having something so easy, like a seven day challenge, where it was only a small amount of things that I had to release or declutter, let go of, actually made the whole process really enjoyable and approachable. And because of that, I stopped the procrastination, I cut the excuses, I just got on and did it and began the process. And for me, that was really important because it kick-started the momentum. It felt doable. And for me, that was important because it gave me a sense of confidence, faith and purpose again, which I really needed because I had, I guess, gotten a little bit distracted and overwhelmed with just stuff in my life that was going on and, and at times weighing me down. Number two. So in doing this decluttering of just small number of things each day for seven days, it actually triggered an organic further additional decluttering and reorganizing and even tidying process after I had gotten rid of the certain number of items. You know, I would get rid of say the, the items and then I would find myself still sitting there and actually further tidying, further reorganizing that particular drawer, cupboard, space or room. And it was completely organic and I didn't want to stop until I felt calm again. So it was pure flow on effect from this mini approachable challenge. Number three, I felt really inspired for the next day. I never at one stage thought, oh, I can't believe I've got to do this again tomorrow. Or where am I going to declutter next? Well, felt any fakeness towards this challenge whatsoever. I actually felt excited and motivated to go on to the next area and think about, okay, well, where do I want to go beyond that? And I get really excited going, oh, wow, I'm going to do this cupboard or I'm going to do this room or I'm going to, um, you know, this would hit me in the shower as a great idea. For me, that was just a beautiful process and I just felt like I was finding my purpose again, finding my path, finding my direction, find my coming back to my roots of where I just love minimalism and appreciate how grounding it really is. Number four, the liberation and pride. As I would finish each daily task, which you will see in the vlog, there was this sensation of pride and satisfaction that also helped fuel my sense of self-worth and self-confidence and even an element of self-love. Sitting back and going, wow, I did it. And look how much better that looks and how much better I actually feel inside now admiring this space around me that reflects my values, my style, my taste, what I appreciate in life. This was really important and something that for me is very valuable as I am still on a mental health journey in rebuilding myself up, but also being very aware of how vulnerable and fragile at times I can sometimes be. Number five, acknowledging how boundaries operate for me. So whilst we moved into a bigger home, 
this home actually doesn't really have much storage at all. And in doing this particular challenge, I realized how important storage and boundaries exist in my life. You see, if I had a home that had lots of storage, I have no doubt now in discovering this that I would fill all that storage with unnecessary clutter, materialistic stuff that I don't really love, value, use and appreciate because the storage is just there. But the lack of storage makes me so much more accountable and mindful in what I choose to keep in my life or what I even choose to accept and bring into my life. So in fact, having less storage is actually a blessing in disguise. And having spaces that you can only have a certain amount of things is actually, for me, a really good thing because it helps keep me in check. Number six, rediscovering who I am. So I know this sounds a little bit cliche, but for me, minimalism has been a huge part of my journey. I fell into minimalism when I was in the depths of postnatal depression and anxiety, and I was suffering severe post-traumatic stress syndrome. So for me, this was almost an element of a cure. It was by minimalism, if I'm honest, was part of my medicine in getting back on my feet again. And in doing this mini challenge for myself that was so approachable, so easy and so practical really helped me see how this actually still acts as a consistent source of medication in my life as I hope that my mental health, that I work on my mental health and learn to help myself with my mental health continues to grow, flourish, strengthen and evolve. And then finally, number seven. In doing this challenge, it made me realize that I never need to let myself hit rock bottom to do this. Why do I have to wait until I'm completely overwhelmed, filled with anxiety, drowning in just stuff? I don't need to do that. By doing this very simple, manageable, approachable challenge that goes for a maximum of seven days, I can do this on a regular basis and never allow myself to just slip back again or to feel overwhelmed like that again. I can do this every couple of weeks. I could do this once a month. I could do this in the change of seasons. But by incorporating this into my life as part of a really healthy habit will really help me take my new bottom base level of mental health to a much higher, more sustainable, healthy like level where I don't need to... My rock bottom is actually really not as a rock bottom as what it used to be in the past. Hopefully I'm making sense, but... What I'm trying to say is my baseline doesn't need to be low. I can have a much healthier baseline that sits higher on the scale of authentic, genuine happiness by incorporating this into my life as a regular habit that I do, just like people do when the change of seasons or moving house or just doing a nice, healthy spring clean. I'm finally done. If you haven't watched this vlog already, I highly recommend that you do because you're going to see a lot inside my home, my heart, and my head. 